Good evening, and welcome to Pastor All Talks. I'll be your host this evening. I'm Dr. Ken. With me as always, you know who this is? Of God course, I've got the amazing uh, uh, Apostle April coming all this way from to Southern California to see us. And, of course, the great Dr. Glenn <laughs> drove two hours just to be with us tonight. Hallelujah. To help us and encourage us with our next teaching. I just want to encourage you real quickly. I just really felt led. We might have took it from another angle before uh, Apostle April and I and one of the series of What If God Says No. But I want to challenge you a little bit deeper. I want to give a, a little bit more broader thought and a little deeper revelation with the great Dr. Glenn with us. Of course, uh, Apostle Cora will share with us is what is the essence of idolatry and this uh, worship of self? Too many times we see in the news the great athletes, they're the greatest runner or the greatest basketball player or the greatest baseball player, and it's all about them. But have we ever thought about it is how did we get the gift? Is it the gift giver or is it the person that's getting the gift that's the greater? And that's what we'll discover today on this th program. So let's begin. Ephesians 5.5 5 says uh, that we're not to covet uh, man who is an idolater who has inherited the kingdom of God. In other words, covetous man can, if I'm saying that correctly, cannot be uh, an inheritance of the kingdom if we always think of ourselves. So, for an example, this is not a, this is not only a sin to a fool, but it's also the nature of idolatry, is selfishness and is self worth. It's all about how we perceive ourselves. So I want to take it to a different side, as we talked about on this a couple of weeks ago. But I want to. Take it from another angle. Now, Apostle, to you, you know a lot of people in ministry, we see a lot of them, they get to a point where they have huge ministries, uh, um, and it gets to a point, their message is so, so good. Is it, it's almost to a point where this is prosperity teaching we see all this time, and we see a lot of, um, the message is very inspirational, but I don't really see a lot of change. I'm not saying, some of them are very, very good, but, it, this seems like a pep talk. What is your thought? <laughs> well, I think when it comes to the prosperity teaching, I, I, I believe that depends on who the prosperity preacher is that's actually giving that word. I mean, I, I don't want to go against, you know, these men or women of God because, you know, if, if they are anointed, you know, and all that, I, I don't want to come against them. But, but I do believe that, that some of them just go a little bit above and beyond what they should be saying. Because a lot of the people that really don't understand, um, you know, about the, the, their teachings, and so they're thinking, well, if you give $1,000, you're going to get $10,000. you are going to reap $10,000. And that is not true. That is not true at all. And, and you know, it, it's all about, you know, whatever the Holy Spirit is telling you to give, then that's what you should give. You shouldn't mm. be giving just because they're telling you to give, you know, that dollar amount because... That, that doesn't mean that you're going to get $10,000. You know, a blessing, it could be, you know, your health. It could be restoration. It could be so many different things. But, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I don't really care for prosperity preaching only because, you know, I, I do know the word of God and I do hear the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is, if he's telling me, you know what, go away, don't even listen to it because it, it's just corrupt teaching. That's all it is. It's prophesying, really, not prophesying. Oh, that's good. Dr. Glenn, to you. Now, I know you know a lot of people in the music business and all that. And it seems like they write these songs. They sound so beautiful and like the creative self came down to give, hand write it to man. But they seem to take such pride in what they do and say instead of giving glory to the one that gave him the gift. What do you think? Well, it's very possible to get caught up in the in the, the pride of being a chosen one where God uses you and he chooses to use you um, to uh, minister his gift, whether it be in song. Um, and a lot of people don't know this in the music business. It's not the person singing the song that really makes the most money. It's the mastermind of the lyrics who wrote the lyrics, who made the, wow. the beat and stuff like that. So a lot of times the person that you're looking at on television, especially if they're up and coming artists, they're really broke. They don't have a lot of money so it's all a facade that's being sold to you now here's where it gets very interesting is that um the person that you see on the screen there um a lot of times because of what us as men do to them not for them but to them it causes an atmosphere or a a, a personal persona that you are the one and what happens is we steal 
the glory or we try to steal the glory from God mm -hmm. and we try to place it within ourselves. And the Bible tells us that this turns into what we call pride. And David said these words so clearly, and it makes so much sense now that I'm on this side of the fence. It mm -hmm. said, Lord, shelter me from pride because pride comes before the fall. Now, what we have to be careful with when we talk about this is using the gifts that God has given you, but also staying humble. You got to stay low. And what happens in the industry is that your name becomes so big it becomes a household name and then you think that you're the one you think that you're the one i'll give a quick story if you don't mind um i was signed to a um record label of which i'm not at liberty to say what it was but i was with a group called forecast and what it was was it was myself uh and three female singers and we ended up getting um a record deal and what happened was this true story i'll never forget this so we ended up getting a manager we had the same manager as bone thugs and harmony and all these big producers so she got us to go to this record label and we met with the cfo the chief financial officer and um, we were there talking and we were so excited because they were talking about all the vision and how they're going to do this and we had this new sound called street gospel and nobody was doing it so we were the benchmark of this new wow. industry that uh this major record label was going to push out now here's what happened i remember it clear as day we were driving home from that meeting and I remember two of the girls saying, well, we need them to do our hair. We need them to make sure that we get gas and I want this car and I want that. And I remember saying, like, you guys, we haven't done anything yet. So let's let's be calm and wait and see what happens. And, and here's what happened. Wow. The next meeting that our manager took us to, um, which was Empress. Uh, the next meeting that our manager took us to, uh, we were sitting in the conference room. It was a big old beautiful, like, uh, ivory table. It was so beautiful. You, you know wow. it was worth thousands of dollars and i remember uh i don't want to say his name i remember he was talking to us and <laughs> right before we got ready to adjourn the meeting one of the girls ra raised her hand and she said um i like what we're talking about but uh where is our wardrobe and our hair and you know gas money for making these trips out here where's this going to come from so the guy said excuse me and she was like yeah well we want we want quote unquote we want what beyonce has is what she said oh my so God. this gentleman the cfo um a very kind man he said um I, I understand what you want but i need you to understand that you're not at beyonce level when you get to beyonce level then absolutely we'll give you whatever you want but he i remember this he looked at the producer and he did his eyebrows like this like like wow i can't believe they just said that but what i think they were saying is in code he was saying no we don't want to so to make a long story even shorter, um, the following week, our um, manager had called us over to her house, and there were four pieces of paper upside down on a coffee table similar to this one. So when we went in there, she told us to turn the, the papers over, and they were release contracts. So we got released all because of that prideful comment. Wow. One comment changed wow. the trajectory of our careers. And what they ended up doing was finding another group and ended up giving them the title of Street Gospel. So I'm saying all of that to say that <clears throat> while you're going through the process, be very careful. Be responsible of the small beginning, because if you're responsible of the small, when you become big, you will still give God the glory. Good word, good word. Dr. Jake. Really good word. Apostle, back to you. How, teach us what what is, uh, you know, when we see this day and age, it's all about fame, fortune, it's build a name. I know in the boxing or the martial arts, everybody's calling each other out. They're the greatest. They're talking about who's the best at everything. Do you really think, because somebody's got to lose and they can't win forever, do you think there's, um, it, it, it sets them up for, uh, uh, something to lose how does you, how do you perceive this as you see around the world i mean not obviously not say people but how take it from a unsafe perspective why are they so uh, enamored with themselves well because pride come from the enemy and god knows that that's why satan fell so when pride is one of the number one uh, spirits that destroy the people of god so when they operate in that spirit very freely it automatically sets them up for failure. So that's a form of what we was talking about, idolatry. So you got to look at who you are in God and who God is in you because when it comes about to materialistic things, it can become an idol. It can become an idol, including yourself. You start becoming full of yourself, and you become yourself idol. And when we think about the word of God, he does not like anything that will come before him. In Colossians 3, it talks about how we need to come um, against carnality, how we need to dismember those things that is on the earth, which is um, immorality or uncleanliness or things or materialistic uh, finances, wives, husbands. 
anything, girlfriends, boyfriends, anything that you try to put above God, he will totally dismiss. And so you have to make sure that you keep those things separate and keep th and keep God ahead of your life. Because even though the Israelites back in the day, no matter what they did, soon as a king fell, they went back to idolatry. Soon as a judge had passed away, they went back to idolatry. So even though they had someone um, to look up to for whatever reason, idolatry, which is operating in the spirit of pride as well, always was a face for them and God always despised idolatry which is also pride so that's why we got to be very careful of what we allow in our life amen good word apostle your thought when we you know it just seems like it's just we can't get anywhere I'm just saying in the world and as believers we have to be so careful but if we don't promote ourselves it's not that attention all the time it's um, look at me or look what I'm wearing or look what I'm driving or the house and all that. And it's just like a business. Any businessman, uh, they, they call it fake it until you make it. They, there's some point to that as far as like when you're started out preaching or you start with your ministry, not everybody's in full reign. I'll show you where that is in Matthew 25. It talks about the gifts, the gifts, but they have to go out and walk the gifts out. It's not f like a present, here's the gift, go ahead and go for it. It's always through our characters matches as, as, as high as we go. But in this case, it seems like throw character out the way. It just, however way it makes me look good, it's all about me. I hear so many, I can't even mention the names as Dr. Glenn. A lot of the churches I've been to, they said, it raised me an offering, I'll split it with you. And I'm thinking, well, where is this with God? I mean, if I'm doing the speaking, if people, if God chooses to heal or give words or whatever, why would you tell me about splitting the offering? Well, I mean, you'd have to do what he wants you to do. What if they don't give? Now what do you do? But your thought on why is everybody so controlling? How does this make me look good? Or, you know, uh, what, what am I wearing? Or where do I live? Or why is that so important? Well, that's because, you know, they're living in the world. That's why <laughs> they're not living, you know, for God. And, and I, I just have to say this, that... I mean, for, for all the things where God has taken me is because of actually me being humble and allowing the Spirit to move through me and me being receptive to the Spirit of God, you know, and, and because I have seen that. I mean, it's just like, you know, being an, an athlete. You know, I had to work very hard to get where I was at when I was in high school and then when I was in college. I mean, it took a lot of discipline just to throw the discus as far as I did. And, and the thing was is that it was never about, like, oh, in your face or anything like that. I was so modest. Like, I was always, even then, encouraging other people, like, come on, you can do it. You can do it because that what was inside of me. Now, as far as ministry is concerned, I feel like that's the same way, too. It's like, you know, I want to encourage everyone else. I'm trying to, to push other people out there to, so that they can see what God sees in them, you know. And it's not about me. It's not about, you know, it's about God and the person that's next to me to to encourage them to get out there so that God can elevate them because God wants God wants to promote all of us you know the, he, we're not supposed to be self promoting God is the one that will do that and you know and I really believe that when you when you bless your enemy when you bless that person that's hurt you so bad and you say you know what Lord I'm going to bless them, and I ask you, Lord, just to just take care of them. And you know what? That comes back to you, regardless of whether you expect it or not. It comes back to you. Next thing you know, you're over there where you never thought you would be, or you, maybe you wanted to be, but you were just waiting for God to move you. So that's how I live my life is just waiting for God to move me. Hallelujah. Good word. So, Dr. G, here's a thought, and you sparked this. as a, a, a When I was a millionaire, it seemed like... I did it on my own, uh, or not gifts, but own ability. Now, I'll show you where that is. God talks about he uses our natural ability, and sometimes we ask God for things, and we think we're moving in his direction, but we're not because he never said yes because we don't look for the answer. We think, oh, this is God. He wants everybody to prosper. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you have the character. Yes, if you're using the money and right, right, yes. Now, watch this. In America, we know uh, prosperity is if you have a roof over your head, you're eating once a meal a day, and you have clean water. Around the world, 90% of the countries are left out because they don't have any of those. Right. So mm -hmm. a lot of people don't live to be over 20. I'm barely over 20, but you hear my point. Right. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is this. This is very, very interesting. We keep praising ourselves. The more money I made, the more people praise me because I was pr 
paying for everybody else. Can somebody give me an amen? amen. And they would ask me to, uh, for example, we go into a clothing store. I'd buy myself, you know, a $350 shirt, but I would buy the 10 people, my entourage, if you will, something that added the same. It might have been three or $400, but everybody got something. So, of course, I had to have the best thing, but what did that really mean? Nothing. Now, I find it interesting, and here's my question to you. Psalms 87, we'll have to throw in some scriptures so it looks like we know what we're talking about in the Bible. Hallelujah. And I think it's two. It talks about the gate of praise. He says, I like Zion better than all of Jacob. Jacob meaning all of Israel, meaning us. So if that is true, if the gate of praise, and how is the pearl of the gate of the, uh, that's what the, uh, gate of praise is made out of pearl. How do you get a pearl? It's out of a, an oy oyster that's been uh, rubbed the wrong way or irritated through sand or other things. Could it be our circumstances that irritated uh, our situations that made the pearl gate that we have to praise the one that irritated us mm -hmm. to make us into the pearl? Or could it be that we're praising the one that gave us the gifts of God mm -hmm. that made us the ability to get wealth to encourage other people if we're working the way he wants us to do? But when we, I'll go back the other way, if what if we just think it's our ability, God said, yes, I have all this money, but he's really not in this because I'm not doing anything he wants me to do. Your thought. Very good word, by the way. Very good word. I believe this. That in life, sometimes God will say yes, but we try to process that check a little bit too soon. That's it. We try to process it too soon. And what I want to read is out of the book of Romans chapter 5. Um, we were talking about this on uh, the last two shows that I was co-hosting on. <clears throat> and it says these words. So I'm not even going to, I'm going to let the scripture speak for itself. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has done uh, who has um, our Lord because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us because of our faith. Watch this. Christ has brought us. I'm going to say that again. Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege oh my God, that's good, because of our faith, because of our faith, because of our faith, because of our faith. Christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. We and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing in God's glory. Watch this. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. Watch this. For we know that they help us develop endurance. So the first thing we need to get is endurance. Where, is where does again? endurance come from? Where That's that? Romans chapter 5, okay. verse 3. See, I'm taking notes. Are you? We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. We need endurance. We need endurance. Endurance is that thing that when we get punched in our stomach and we can't breathe, the endurance to live kicks in and we end up breathing again and you take that big gasp of breath it's because your body has been through so much that it knows what to do when it goes through adverse times if i were to punch you in your stomach and you stop breathing your body knows what needs to kick in in order to get you to breathe again if you say i remember when i was a kid i had a friend um and when he get mad at his mom he said i'm gonna stop breathing and his mom would say, if you stop breathing, you're going to fall on the ground and your body's going to kick in and start breathing again. It's because your body has built endurance. We as believers have to build some endurance. And where does endurance come from? Trials. It comes through tribulation. It comes through rejection. It comes through hurt. It comes through being put through fire. And we need to stop asking God to take us out of things and ask him to continue to bring us through them. Because it's going through them that builds your endurance, not him pulling you out of it. Then it says this word, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And then verse 5 takes it home with this, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. What is Amen. that saying? Is if you go through the Hallelujah. process, you will have exactly what it is you want. Stop trying to get character of strength without first having endurance. Mm. He says, yes, I want to give you the house. I want to give you the finer things in life, but first learn how to love people. Yeah. Because it's through people that I'm going to prepare you for the next right. level of your life. It's through people that I'm going to have you get the blessing to get the job interview or to start the business. So learn endurance of dealing with difficult people, and I will take you to a place of prosperity. So good. Wow. Powerful, powerful. Way to go, Dr. G. Uh, apostle to you. Now, why is this always happening? Why do we think we're hearing God, as Dr. Glenn said? 
and we always fall short. We think, well, we are supposed to be prosperous. That's what the Bible says. Why do we always, like he says, take it for granted, God saying yes, that we don't wait for any answers. Can you shed some light on that? Because we really don't believe God. <laughs> we really do not believe God. Those who believe God, they receive from God. Oh my goodness, they wait on right. God. They that's have right, patience right. in God. They know that, the, that our timing is not of God. So regardless of what we want, it's through the faith, the patience, and the waiting of that you receive. So when we rush things, the Bible says that things that actually, um, how you say, lust for the flesh, you get fleshly results. Things that actually lust for the spirit, you get spiritual results. That's so right. when you allow your spiritual mindset to contaminate the things of God, which is your spiritual mindset, then you are going to get fleshly results. But when you allow the spirit to take over, then you are going to come into that place, as like Dr. Gillen was saying, that you got the tribulation, which actually give you that beat-up moment, that part where you can't help but go pray, that part where you can't help but go and seek God, that part where you don't know no other way to turn but to God. And that's what's going to tear down that flesh, bring it to that place of brokenness to where you can understand who God truly is because that's when your savior show up because he said that he comes in your time of weakness so once you are no longer able to be prideful and strong and think that you are independent then you are able then you will be able to rely on God and receive the results from God because he is your true savior and he's the one that bless you so you got to rely on the spirit of God because he brings you through that place to where hope which is faith will give you the result of what you're looking for in the first place but you got to first understand what faith is it's not just a substance but it's a relationship it's an understanding. It's an establishment. It's a result of what you want out of God. And there you will receive God in all that and everything else he has for you. That was Good powerful. Word. Don't forget, she'll be on again at 630 Thursday. I just had to say that was just so powerful. 630 <laughs> on why does God say no? That was really well done. Amen. Apostle to you. Now, you did a lot of competition. You did a lot of competing. You did a lot of comparing. You did a lot of winning and losing. In your opinion, what did that teach you and teach us here for the, the believer, the spiritual mind? What does competition bring to the table? Well, I believe it brings perseverance, as Ooh. Dr. Glenn said, that because, you know, good. the thing is, is that as, as um, an athlete, you know, you're not always going to win every single track meet or every competition. Really you're, you, you have to lose. See, I was always brought up that, the, the more the, sometimes the more times that you fail is, is when you get back up because now you have a determination now That's you're going to say okay you know what I'm going to go for it I'm going to you know I'm going to win I'm going to you know do this I'm going to get my goal and I just learned at a very young age too that that because of God you know being in my life at that young age is, was to write down my vision was to write down my goals okay and it says Good in Habakkuk Lord. you know two two and three it says write down your vision write down your goals and I remember doing that. I remember writing down my goals, what I wanted to achieve in high school. I wanted to be that state champion. And, and, and by being that state champion, that meant that I was going to have to come and practice. I was going to have to be dedicated, I mean, from a sophomore to my junior year to my senior year. I mean, there was, there was no way about it. I was going to do it. My mom and dad knew it. My brothers knew it. We all came together into agreement, and we all just pushed each other to the best level, to the highest level that we could do. And next thing I know, uh, here I am, you know, and it wasn't because of me. It was because of my family. My family pushed me to get to that level. My brothers came out and practiced with me, so I didn't have to go out and, and get the discus every time that I threw it out there 100 feet. My brothers were shagging for me, and they would encourage me, and that was the reason why I got to be where I got to be, and next thing I know, I am getting my goals. I'm accomplishing what I set out to do, and I remember writing down those goals. My daughters even found that paper and said, Mom, look, we have your high school and even college goals here. And it was. It came to pass. Everything that I had worked for came to pass. And I give God the glory for that because, see, he will show you. It says that even if you wait, you know, if you tarry, it means to wait. Because it's a process. You have to go through a process. It's not going to just happen overnight. You're not going to get the glory like that. No, it, you have to wait. You have to get processed for it. Now, the only thing that I want to say about this is that I wish that I would have given God the glory back then. Because, see, even though I wasn't taking the glory, but I wasn't giving it to God either. 
And I give him the glory now because, you know what, it, I, I can see the things that he did in my life. And, and so now, you know, I just want to encourage all of you to give God the glory for everything that you go through, even through the hard times, because those hard times are going to make you up to those good times. So that's, that's what happened with me. So good I give word, God the glory. Good word, good word. All right, Dr. Glenn, you have so much revelation, I have to ask you this. Muhammad Ali said, I was the greatest, I was the greatest. Now, on that note, with the apostles speaking, how you have to write the goals down. Now, to be in humility, to line up with our Lord and Savior, we're supposed to be humble, but if Muhammad said, I was the greatest. How do we write the vision on a great goal? I'm just saying. It, we're writing the vision how we're going to be good at this. We believe, as the apostles said, you know, if we, uh, we line up with God and we actually listen and line up with his morals and the character we're supposed to have. Now, how do we do that but still be the greatest, but we're still humble all at the same time? Very good. It's It has everything to do with um, the frequency, as we were talking about earlier today is there's a sound that has to be produced in your atmosphere. There's a sound that needs to be released wow. into the atmosphere of what it is that you want. And that goes back in relation to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, when God says, let them have dominion. Now, what he was talking about was the humus man, which is um, the dirt body that, li that has a spirit. Um, and what he was saying was that when Muhammad Ali makes make sounds like that that sound that frequency what it does it causes the universe to do what it is that you're telling it to do mm. muhammad ali the bible says he, he, thank you holy spirit let the poor say that i am rich and let the weak say that i am strong you can't have something that you're not speaking first. And I like to say this um, when it comes to prayer. You will never, ever see it with your eyes open until you can first learn to see it with your eyes close what am i saying is that it's time for us as believers to stop telling our god how big our problems are and start turning our position and telling our problems how big our god really Amen. is so what muhammad ali was doing was actually a scriptural thing he's telling the world he's telling the nation i am the greatest of all times there will be none better than me to ever do this thing and he knew where his gifting came from he knew that the the source of his energy was from his god now as he as he got older he started to change it and started to go into Muslim belief and all that stuff but what I was sharing on one show before this one is that it's about principles there's a difference yes. between a law and a principle the law for California is resonated that the speed limit is 65 that's the highest you can go yeah. now if you go over to Germany they have something called an Autobahn which is an, a speedless thing so if you are over in Germany and try to bring that law here to California you go to jail Right. Because the laws are segregated by the county, the country, the state or whatever the case may be. Principles, on the other hand, it doesn't matter where you are on the globe. It's the principle of the matter, as we like to call it. If I stand on a 30 foot building here in California and I jump off of that building and hit the concrete, I'm dead. <laughs> now, the principle says this. If I go to Germany and I get on a 30 foot building, and I jump off of that building. I'm going to splat on the ground just like I did in California. Why? Because it's a principle. And that's what Muhammad Ali was displaying was the principle. That's why we see so many non-believing people thriving and businesses are thriving because yep. they understand the principle. They're not waiting for God to do something for them. They understand I have to get busy about doing my father's business and I'll reap the benefits of it. Some of the biggest givers are businesses. They're businesses. But why can't we get the church to give? Come on. And we wonder why we're living in so much poverty is because we haven't got the principle behind giving. Once we get the principle, not the law of giving, but the principle of giving, you'll then Good. get back in your life. The Bible says give and it will come back to you. Not hoard or hide or put away in a savings account or sit on the can or get all you can, can all you get and sit on the can. That's not what it says. It says give. And it will come back to you. Amen. And then the Bible says, in good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Watch this. Shall men give unto your bosom. Hallelujah. Once we get this principle of giving, like when you see these people and we are, oh, well, they're doing it just to avoid taxes. They, they give a million dollars to this. And that's fine. But look at their businesses. They're flourishing. Yep. And the church is dying. Yep. Get the principle. Good Stop word. focusing on the law, the law, the law, the law. I got to do that. I got to do that. And focus on the principle. Stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about others and watch what God does in your life. Powerful. Yeah. Interesting thought. 
If we get, if we wait to receive, I hear so many people say, "Well, why don't you? If somebody gave me this, or if I won the lottery, if I this, always the receiving point." They would uh, actually take away your blessing of the harvest because you were waiting to receive something. They never gave it to you; you would never have anything. But this way, God has shown us. It says in Mark four three, "Give seed to the sower." It says, "Listen first." seed to the sower so how do we get the seed we ask god we get the seed to sow what to sow for our harvest at another time another yes, season yes. isn't that interesting that he knows when each of us need that harvest i don't know where to ask apostle april to get the fire extinguisher or this next question because <laughs> everybody's just on fire here let me ask you this we declare a, th a decree a th thing and it's established and that's in job why is it 22 28 is maybe i'll look that up here's my point if we're decreeing declaring does that always come to pass is there a law there or is it a principle that is a definite principle Hallelujah. it's not a law that's the word of god that's something that cannot be changed or pro or, or provoked um, when he said, if you decree a thing, that means it, when you think about the old times, it's where the king had the ring and wherever, whatever law or whatever uh, structure or mandate he had in place, he would stamp it with the seal of his ring with mm -hmm. wax. And therefore, once he had done that, not even himself can take it back. And that's a decree. That's something that when you speak, which is a word of God, this was created and it put the seal of Jesus Christ's blood upon every word that's within this constitution. So therefore, everything that is spoken in this constitution, it shall come to pass. It shall be established. That's why he said, if you decree a thing, it shall be established. Why? Because of the authority, the mandate that you have on your life, because of your kingship, because of your authority, because you are a ruler here on earth, not just in heaven but on earth you have been given the right to reign queens and kings of God you have the dominion you have the power you have the authority that's what Christ was sent for to give us that example to use the Holy Spirit utilize that power don't allow it to just sit there and settle in your stomach and in your gut and you always have these things of what you believe is butterflies but it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you <laughs> trying to give you an influence and impression of what God wants you to do raise up people of God and let God use you mightily so you can stand your ground and Preach. take back what the enemy has taken from you because you have rightfully been robbed you have wrongfully been robbed but God is giving you the authority right now this day at this moment to decree a thing and it shall be established and if you declare it meaning that you if you just speak it out of your mouth and you just confess the word over your situation I bet you I guarantee you it shall be established and you shall Amen. see the manifestation of God's work hallelujah hallelujah I mentioned she'll be on at 6 30 on Thursday <laughs> This is very uh, important point. I hope everybody's taking notes and getting a, a handle on this. Is so we talked about competition. We talked about decreeing. We've talked about speaking the word. We've talked about laws. We've talked about principles. Now let's switch gears and let's talk about how does God's character roll into this. Now if I'm decreeing, declaring, and it's all about me for the big house and the cars and the money and big businesses but i'm you know don't care about god but i'm decreeing the glory i'm saying the word of god i have the principle but i'm not as being established in god's character how does that work apostle well i believe that it's all about the fruit of the spirit in galatians 5 22 i mean you have to have the gift of love you know of faith and hope and all of that i mean if you are not being in his character or, or in his like image wow. you're not going to get all that stuff you are going to get the opposite i mean yeah you might get a few things you know just because you know you might have money or something but but really to to really be prosperous to really have the favor of god and to really receive those blessings it says that you need to be right with god you need to be righteous and that means to be right with god and if you are not right with god then those things aren't going to happen to you i mean i i I can only share from my own experience of what God has always done in my life. And it's only because I have given to people or given to situations or given to foundations or whatever it was when the Holy Spirit said, give, I gave. And then it came back to me as the apostle said, you know, press down, shaking together, right over that men poured into me. And I, and I have to encourage all of you that, that it, you know, it's not about 
your money it's god's money in the first place and you know what he wants to do with it he wants to multiply it that's why you need to give so he can multiply it back to you that's the reason why i believe that that when you hear someone that you know that says that's a need or something to give the holy spirit is saying go give to them give to them because god just wants to multiply you with with more that's all that's all well done well done well done now dr glenn let's go a little bit deeper as I've been a millionaire twice, one saved, one not saved. We already heard the testimony that I was giving my entourage, everybody. But, every, you know, people on the street I would give money to. It was like the Robin Hood thing. I would stop at the bank and give the this one. The bank was so out in the middle. I'll never forget. It was Gun Barrel City in Texas. We had the largest account there. And uh, p- people used to stand in the about just to watch me come out of the bank with the money. Wow. Uh, and this uh, guard was like. 90 years old i don't even think he it looked like <laughs> barney five but at 95 i had to help him out there to help me into the car because i had so much gas anyway so i would always give him a hundred dollar tip and, and everybody was ooing and on taking pictures and all this i say all that to say this now fast forward i'm at the church now I, i'm the big believer i should be the pastor there everybody's screaming i'm taking all the head chips the pastors out to dinner i'm spending five to a thousand dollars every other night on lavish dinners but i'm sowing into the kingdom i'm giving to the, all these people i'm giving to every offering that's five times a night hallelujah mm-hmm. so why all of a sudden i i can understand why i'm less than the first time but the second time surely been hearing god's voice i'm giving to the kingdom i'm sowing all these great men of gods i don't remember god saying to do this but i'm surely got the right principle don't i i'm giving all these great men of God, all this money, and I'm still losing it. Why? Mm, very, very good point. Very good point. Here, here's the issue, is that the heart. That's the issue. Are you giving from your heart? Or are you giving from your wallet? That's the big point right there. If you give from your wallet, you're giving from a place of emptiness where you're looking for stardom, Going back to idolism, right? We, I will look at me. I'm giving the, the security guy 100. You said they were taking pictures and all this stuff. Hey, I'm giving the, I'm, and I'm feeling good about this. He's feeling good about it. The city's taking pictures of this. This is great. And then we go into the church and look, I'm, I'm buying all this food for the pastors. I'm, I'm the one paying for everything. I'm giving thousands of dollars away to the church. And da 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 And that's giving from the wallet. When we give from the heart, which is, which is a totally different bank account in my opinion, it, it's a spiritual thing. It's spiritual. So uh, 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 people will tell me all the time. I, I just are they're, they're boasting about it. Hey, there was a homeless man on the street and I gave him 20 bucks. What happens is you're only going to get praise for that one time. Once. If you tell me that you did it and I say, awesome, good job. That's your praise for that giving. You just robbed yourself from the multitude. Wow. But if I do it and I keep it in secret. I don't tell you because I didn't do it for you and I didn't do it to get approval from you. I did it unto the Lord. Amen. That's when God says, OK, now I have to praise you for giving that thing out. Yeah. And what happens in life and, and, and I'm, I'm guilty of it, too, too, doing it in the past where I'm trying to do stuff for people because I want them to like me. Mm-hmm. I want them to know that, hey, I'm not here to take from you. So let me buy for you. I would go out with millionaires and I would say, let me pay for this. And it wasn't that I even wanted to. It wasn't even that I really had it, to be honest with you. But I wanted them to like me. So I was seeking the likeness of man. I wasn't seeking the likeness of God. But now I'm at a point in my life where I found out that those men that I paid for the dinner for, they don't call me. They don't remember me. They may not even know my name, to be honest with you. So I stopped doing things. When I give now, I give from my heart. Amen. Meaning that my friends and my loved ones, there'll be times we'll go out to dinner and I'll say, you know what, I'll take care of it. And it's coming from my heart, not from my wallet. And I'm not expecting and, and here's the great thing. Here's the secret to all of that okay. is I'm not expecting anything back. Listen Praise to me. Lord. Sometimes not even from God. Yes. Amen. I just want to show my appreciation for what he's done. Hallelujah. And for a lot of people, you got to remember this. God is going to elevate you and he's going to shoot you into a place where you're going to have the ability to pay people's homes off if you wanted to. But I forbid you that you do it from your wallet. Do it from your heart. Amen. Wow. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Apostle, let's go even deeper. Now, we've discovered that, you know, unsaved, saved. We've tried the principles. Now we discover it's from the heart. And we're understanding that now we have to have a little bit of character. But wait a minute. We're still 
uh, everybody around the world, you know, says I'm the greatest or I preach the best message or I'm praying for the sick. They're being healed. I mean, aren't I doing God's will? I mean, they're still looking up to me. I mean, am I doing it wrong or do I, how can I stay humble and still all this happening? Your thought. That's, that's very good. Um, this right here was very revolutionizing to me. When I had read the book of Luke, it talked about how Jesus, when he was doing his ministry, and I had brought this up before, and I think it, we, it, people missed it. It was a, a, a scripture on there that says how people thronged God, God Jesus, God. And, they, and they touched Jesus. There was two different significance. There was That's two things in there that actually just really um, shed some light. Throng is a crowd of people, and That's to right. touch God is, a, is the whole thing significance of it now when we talk about thronging it's just like like you said you got the people who's going around in ministry who's doing all this type of stuff but they're crowding the christianity of the ministry they're crowding all the different um the different uh count the the concerts and the anointed people they're just hanging around them all this they're thronging them but they're never touching god when the, when the woman with Good the work. issue of blood went through the crowd of people, which is the throng of people who was around Jesus, but they wasn't touching him, they were only around him, the woman with the issue of blood through her faith, oh my God, I feel the Holy Spirit with this one, Hallelujah. through her faith, my God, she touched him, and he said, who touched me? He felt virtue come out of him. That is no favoritism. That is something that is touching the presence of the Lord. That is something that's going into the deepest presence of God, of the being of who he is, to be able to pull the full manifestation of the power of God mm. out into the manifestation of this world. Wow. So when you want to touch God, you got to go in a place of brokenness. You got to go in a place of unfulfillment. You got to go in a place of want. But you got to go in a place and say, you know what? I believe because when you hang around people, you're thronging God, saying, you know what? God is going to give me this. I'm going to read this scripture. He's going to give it to me. I'm going to do this. He's going to give it to me. But what you have to understand is the principle might manifest, but God's blessing won't. Mm, because he right. cannot bless his word if it's not according to him. Wow. He treasure his word. Why? Because it's his son. It's encrypted off the creation of his own word. So therefore, he cannot honor something that is not of himself. So if you want to um, speak the word of God, you can speak it. But if it's not of God, then you're not speaking God. You're speaking words. Mm. It's wow, empty. That's good. Wow. So I just encourage you, when wow. you want to touch God, don't hang around people that's all you believe is anointed. But hang around God. Go into the presence. Go yes, into that secret amen. place. Go into that place where nobody else see you as that Dr. Ken said and Dr. Glenn said that you go and you got to do it to where nobody know. Because he said, what you do in secret, I will yes. bless you in public. That's right. And that's just Word. all I got to say about that. Wow. Oh, God. I, would dro I would drop the mic, but it broke last time I did it. Um, <laughs> Apostle, we got to wrap this up. Uh, uh, ten minutes. Um, the people are hurting. They, we've gone every which way about our pride, our idolatry, yeah, uh, you know, our self-worth. We found out that maybe we're not as humble as we think we are. It takes humility yeah. and uh, lowly uh uh, spirit, meaning, you know, uh, recognizing the Father is all-powerful, all-great, and every breath we get is from the Father. So if that is all true, and we've learned that maybe we're not, the competition's not always, we always have to win, but we do it in humility and encouragement that there's, everybody can be great. Uh, let everybody else win. Uh, we win because everybody wins. Uh, and business, we don't have to have the most money because we can get our share as long as everybody else is getting their share and everybody's being helped. So we, we've seen it every way. Now, the people are hurting out there. They still don't understand why they're struggling with their finances. Their, their marriages are struggling. Uh, the businesses aren't as good. Uh, they feel like the, the school, they're not the, the top in their academics, or the athletes don't feel like they're the greatest sports hero they they need more encouragement what would you say how would you pray what word would you give them as we close the night to encourage them to it's not all about them i believe that you know like jesus it's it's about who he was who he is today it, it's about his love you know when when you have so much love in your heart 
you know, that, that, that people can get healed because of your compassion, you know, that, that's the turning point, um, I believe, for anyone to, to know that, you know, it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, that love conquers all, love never fails, that, that you know, no matter what your situation is, I mean, I realize that being in, in sports my whole life, that it was about falling down and getting myself back up and, and just keep on, you know, persevering. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to persevere after him. You know, he wants us to carry, you know, that torch for him, for his glory, you know, and, and so that we can be witnesses, so that we can share a testimony with others, so that they can see the glory of God that's in you. Because it's what he, it's because of what you went through is how he brought you out of, you know, where you're going today. So I would have to say that, you know, you have to walk in love. I mean, that that's it right there. Jesus is love. You know, God is love. You know, I mean, we have to walk in his love. For the manifestation of the Holy Spirit to take place, it's all about his love. Because remember, you have to forgive people that have hurt you all the time. And you have to love because it says in the Bible that if you do not love, if you do not love others, then God will not love you. If you or, or if you don't forgive people, then God will not forgive you. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. But the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart. Then it says, and secondly, is to, to love yourself and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. So I have to encourage all of you that to forgive and to love because that's where the humility comes from and once you and once you do that then you're going to be in the right with god good word dr glenn bring us home what we're struggling here help us for some of us this is all i hear the holy spirit saying everybody who you call your friend is not your friend good I word out. i'm gonna say that one more time everybody that you call your friend is not your friend Start evaluating the people who are in your inner circle That's really good and watch what God does in your life. When you start weeding out the ones that have been sticking around that are watching, they're not there to help you to, to get to the next level of life. They're there watching, waiting and hoping that you fail so that they can say these words to you. They're waiting to say four words to you. See, I told you. It's time to go to another level and God won't leave you alone. He's just ready to replace some things in your life. Amen. That's all it is. So be careful who you call your friend Woo. because they're not really your friend. Good word. Great word. Woo. Don't forget, Dr. Glenn will be with us at 7 o'clock on Thursday and at 9 o'clock on Thursday. <laughs> Apostle, your final thought. Pray for us. Leave, leave me two minutes to close. Help the people understand. Tie this all together. What are we doing wrong? What is it that we need to learn? Stop being distracted. Yeah, ooh. There's things that brings distractions within the room and in your life. And God will use that to make you focus on the things <laughs> that he wants to utilize you for. So we need to look at God only. Stay focused on God and whatever distractions come into your life, just That's know right. that they're there to help you and they're there to hurt you. So you got to be able to distinguish the two. What is like Dr. Glenn said, is it there to hurt you or is it there to help you? That's but this right. is something that's very significant. When we go through a lot of situations in our lives mm -hmm. and we feel like it's so painful and it's just not fair and why is it not that's changing true. for me? I'm doing so much. That's I'm it. paying my offerings. I'm not getting nothing in that's return. Right. I'm that. talking to these people and even though I'm expressing myself of these visions I'm having really of the word of God that I'm getting these revelations mm -hmm. for and they just turn their back and they hate on me and now they don't want to talk to me. Well, what you have to come to the realization that's is right. that you are pregnant. You are birthing something. You are birthing the things of God, and that was something that is always going to turn the enemy another way. So he is going to actually attract the enemy because he wants to abort what God has placed in your life. So people of God, I encourage you to even to stay strong in the times that you are going through those things because the Bible says that your tribulations is going to give you perseverance and perseverance character and character um, hope. So you got to know that these things are process to grow you so everything that you come into is is preparing you for the birth of your pregnancy so even though you're pregnant and you feel like you're not pregnant in the physical you're pregnant is something spiritual so just continue to take care of it pray about it don't let the enemy abort it because once he abort it then you got to start all over again Good and word. that's what the enemy wants you to start so I want you to encourage you just to stay focused on God step, step before him 
and just give him, give him everything that you have, and he would give it back to you. Amen. Powerful, powerful. Don't forget, she'll be on with us 6.30 on Thursday Pacific time at 9.30. Thank you so much for watching. I'll close with this. As every time we've gone with the panel, they've all said two consistent things. Patience. We have to be careful as we walk out with God. Is he truly in command of our life? Is he Lord of Lords, King of Kings? Does he own everything in your life? We have to be patient and trust that he'll walk us through. And, of course, pers perseverance. We have to pursue the call that he's given us, the purpose that he has for us. If we'll be patient and understand it, we trust and we persevere through everything that we've gone through. He'll bring us to the other side with glory that we cannot even imagine. We won't even have to fulfill or say anything. Everybody will know that God is for us who could be against us. Amen. Until next week, I'm Dr. Ken. Of course, you know who the God apostle is. You. Apostle April will be with us on Thursday, and the great Dr. Glenn will be back on Thursday with us. Until next week, we'll see you on Pastor All Talks. Thank you so much for watching.